Hello, my name is Chris and I'm both a river scientist and a lecturer in physical geography at UWE Bristol. Welcome to the fourth in a series of five mini lectures about drainage basin hydrology that are designed to help anyone studying A-level geography. Before you go any further, please make sure that you have watched the lectures that come before this one and that you have a copy of the worksheets that go along with the lectures so that you can fill them in as we go and finish with a complete set of notes for you to revise from. You can find a link to the worksheets below, as well as links to the other four lectures in this series. OK, let's get started with lecture four, natural factors affecting drainage basin hydrology. As we explored in the previous lecture, some drainage basins have high levels of storm flow and low levels of base flow and are known as flashy or responsive catchments, while some have low levels of storm flow and high levels of base flow and are known as unflashy or unresponsive catchments. Most drainage basins lie somewhere between these two extreme states and how flashy a drainage basin is depends on both natural and human factors. We can explore the natural factors responsible for how flashy a drainage basin is by examining each stage of the drainage basin hydrological cycle, which we covered in detail in lecture two. OK, so starting with precipitation. Precipitation intensity is the amount of precipitation falling over a given time period, usually measured in millimetres of depth per hour. Drainage basins with lots of high intensity precipitation, like heavy storms, have lots of water entering the drainage basin over a short period of time. This will cause drainage basins with higher precipitation intensity to have higher levels of storm flow entering the channel, resulting in a flashier hydrograph. Moving on to how natural factors affect the processes of interception transpiration and evaporation. The greater the vegetation coverage across a drainage basin, the more precipitation will be intercepted, slowing the movement of water onto hill slopes and therefore into river channels. This causes lower level of, of storm flow to enter the channel, resulting in a less flashy drainage basin. In addition, more vegetation means that more of the intercepted water is turned to water vapour via evaporation and more of the water in the soil is converted into water vapour via transpiration. This will cause drainage basins with higher vegetation cover to have lower levels of storm flow entering the channel, resulting in a less flashy hydrograph. The higher the temperature and wind speed in the drainage basin, the higher the rates of evaporation will be from both vegetation and other surfaces on hill slopes like soil and tarmac. This means that drainage basins with higher temperatures and wind speeds have lower levels of storm flow entering the channel due to their higher evaporation rates, and this results in a less flashy hydrograph. Next, let's consider natural factors affecting overland flow, infiltration and through flow. Firstly, soil type. If the soil on the drainage basin hill slopes is impermeable, for example, example clay soil, then its infiltration capacity is more likely to be exceeded by the rate of precipitation falling during storm events. This will result in more overland flow, so that more storm flow enters the river channel quickly. This means that drainage basins with lower soil permeability, so with more impermeable soil, have higher levels of storm flow entering the channel, resulting in a flashier hydrograph. The soil condition also has an impact. If the soil on a drainage basin hill slope is already saturated with water from a previous precipitation event, 
or alternatively it is baked hard due to an extended hot dry period, then its infiltration capacity is likely to be less and so is more likely to be exceeded by the rate of precipitation falling during storm events. This will result in more overland flow so that more storm flow enters the river channel quickly. This means that drainage basins with more saturated or baked soil have higher levels of storm flow entering the channel, resulting in a flashier hydrograph. The hill slope gradient is also important. If the hill slopes within the drainage basin have a steeper gradient, like this, the rates of overland flow and through flow will be higher, as a greater proportion of water's weight will be pulling it in the downslope direction. This will cause more storm flow to enter the river channel quickly. This means that drainage basins with steeper hill slopes have higher levels of storm flow entering the channel, resulting in flashier hydrographs. Now, let's consider natural factors affecting rates of percolation and groundwater flow. The permeability of the bedrock underneath hill slopes affects the rate of percolation and therefore the amount of water that travels slowly as groundwater flow or quickly as overland flow or through flow. If there is little permeable rock within the drainage basin, so that it's dominated by impermeable bedrock, then little water will be able to percolate down into the bedrock and travel slowly to the channel as groundwater flow. Instead, more water will be forced to travel as through flow and overland flow quickly into the channel, resulting in a greater amount of storm flow and therefore a flashier drainage basin. Conversely, if the drainage basin has lots of permeable bedrock, then lots of water can percolate down into this bedrock and travel slowly to the channel as groundwater flow. This will result in the drainage basin having a high base flow and therefore being less flashy. Finally, let's consider natural factors that affect how flow is delivered from the drainage basin's river channel network. Firstly, channel slope. Steeper river channels like this one will travel water more quickly to the outlet. This means drainage basins with steeper river channels will have flashier hydrographs like this, and those with less steep river channels will have less flashy hydrographs like this. Drainage basin shape also has a role to play. Circular drainage basins, like this one on the right, result in the water from a precipitation event all arriving at a similar time at the outlet. Whereas in the elongated basin, like the one on the left, the arrival of water is more spread out over time in a long, thin drainage basin like this. This means that drainage basins that are more circular in shape tend to be flashier than those that are long and thin because circular drainage basins have more water arriving over a shorter time period and therefore have higher peak discharges. Whereas elongated drainage basins, the water arrives spread out over a longer time period and therefore their peak flows are less. You can learn more about the natural factors affecting drainage basin hydrology by completing the activity described in your worksheet. This activity makes use of information describing the characteristics of drainage basins for each of the flow gauges hosted on the National River Flow Archive. Okay, thank you for listening. I hope that you found it interesting. Please check out the remaining lecture in this series using the link below.